So when you think of the Oklahoma City Thunder, you're probably thinking of the young up and coming core with Shea, with Chet, all the assets they have. Or maybe you're thinking about that finals run they had in 2012, but people kind of forget the team sandwiched in between with Melo, PG, and Russ. Yeah, it looks like at the time the Thunder did the best job possible to retool their roster after KD left, but this team constantly underperformed and became another one of the most recent failed NBA super teams. Before we start talking about the OKC Big 3 post rant, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. So post Kevin Durant era, the Thunder were in a tough spot after the 2016 Western Conference Finals. They were one win away from the NBA Finals. KD would dip to the Warriors. Russ had his 2017 revenge tour. He won MVP, but ultimately he had no help in the playoffs and he'd go down to the Rockets in five. That brings us to the 2017 offseason. Paul George, after seven years with the Pacers, had finally requested a trade. And we told the story a little bit in the Dame retrospective. I believed wholeheartedly he was coming to the Blazers. Apparently reports were out that we offered three first round picks and anyone on our roster not named Dame, CJ, or Nurk. Instead, the Thunder got him. They sent out Oladipo and Sabonis, and that was it for Paul George. No picks, nothing. Yeah, at the time it looked like, why didn't they take our offer? But in hindsight, great deal for the Pacers. So in the span of one year, Sam Presti turned Serge Ibaka and a protected first round pick into Paul George and Jeremy Grant. How did does he keep doing it? Why doesn't he just turn water into wine while he's at it? He basically is doing that. Dude's a f miracle worker. And the thing is, he wasn't even done because Carmelo Anthony won out of New York. So he sent out Ennis Cantor, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second for Carmelo. Another guy we were hoping the Blazers would get. And another reason to hate this team, because they got both the guys that we really wanted to come to the Blazers. <laughs> they also locked up Russ to a long-term extension. So just a perfect off season for the Thunder. So there was a ton of hype around this team going into the 2018 season. Russ actually had a supporting cast this year. They were dubbed the OK3 nickname for their big three. And Stephen A said he thought they were the biggest threat to challenge the Warriors, not just in the West, in the entire league. Well, Stephen A is full of nothing but good takes, right? Oh, absolutely. So clearly this was going to age well. <laughs> and to be fair to him, this actually wasn't a terrible take. No, like... no, it's not a terrible take at the time. It's just with the benefit of hindsight. <laughs> right. The league was pretty wide open, but... We'll We'll talk about what happened. So before the season even kicked off, of course, Mello gave us a hilarious moment during media day where he was asked just if he would be open to coming off the bench. And he just responded with, who, me? me? <laughs> <laughs> Such a mellow response. Yeah, the reporter was like, well, that basically answers that question. And then he did the AP. AP they said, I got to come off, off the bench. The bench. So you can tell kind of where Melo's <laughs> ego was at the time. And they would beat the Knicks their first game. But after that, they struggled big time. Won seven of their next 20 games. They were tied for ninth in the West going December. You had that game against the Magic where Russ just looked defeated. <laughs> Things were not looking great. Surprisingly enough, in that stretch, though, they played the Warriors and they actually blew them out in Oklahoma City. 108-91. This is that very famous game where Russ and Katie were just going at it. Got nose to nose. They were clapping each other's faces. So... I, it was clear they had talent. They just they needed some time to gel as a team, you know? Yeah, in December, they really started to turn things around. They went 12-5, and five, bringing the record up to 20-17 and 17 on the season. And Russ was especially great this month. He was looking like that MVP Russ again. But from there, they kind of just plateaued. Like, they'd win five games in a row, then lose four of the next five. And they'd end up winning 48 games, only one win higher than the season prior where Russ had no help. Yeah, and they got matched up with the Utah Jazz in the first round. A Utah team, lest we forget, that was not supposed to be here at all. No. Because they had just lost Gordo in the offseason, who was their best player the season prior. But it was rookie Donovan Mitchell who came out of nowhere. By the way, I always feel like I need to bring it up. Dame wanted the Blazers to draft Donovan Mitchell. And we didn't. We drafted Zach Collins. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Mm. There's you more trauma sprinkled in there. It. Game one in OKC, the Jazz would take an early lead, but Russ and PG put an end to that. They combined for 65 points and gave the Thunder a 1-0 lead in the series. But after that, the Thunder, and particularly their big three, just fell apart. 
Yeah, game two was back and forth at first, but then the Jazz built up a small lead in the third. The Thunder, though, responded with a 17-0 run to take a five-point lead. So you're thinking, all right, they're looking good. They're going to take a 2-0 lead. And then in the fourth, their big three vanished. Two points total on zero of 14 shooting? That's crazy. Paul George, Russ, and Melo giving you two points in a fourth quarter. And then game three and game four, the Thunder would lose both games in Utah. Both games would start out close, but then the Jazz would pull away. And game four especially was getting chippy as hell. I will say, as a proud Oklahoma City Thunder hater, game four was a treat to <laughs> it watch. It was amazing. I had a great time watching game four. And yeah, it was just pull apart brawl after hard foul after pull apart brawl. It even got to the point where the announcers were like, what is going on in this game? So now we're back in OKC for game five. At halftime, it looked like their season was over. They were down 15, going to halftime. Everything was looking bad. But Paul George and Russ would combine for 54 in the second half. And they would keep the Thunder alive, going back to Utah. And fair play to Russ in game six. I mean, the man did all he could. 46 points, 10 boards, five assists, basically single-handedly kept them alive. But with the Thunder down three with 20 seconds left, Paul George went for the foul instead of just trying to get a good shot off. Never do that in a playoff game. Regular season, that's one thing you might get the call. In a playoff game, they're not giving you that call. And it wasn't a foul anyway. No, it wasn't. Not even close. And how about Paul George in this closeout game? Playoff P, mm. named himself before the series, five points on two of 16 shooting god, god dude, that's dang. awful wow. <laughs> So overall, season one with this new big three, massive disappointment. A preseason team that was hyped up as a possible like Western Conference Finals team goes down in six to a Utah Jazz team led by a rookie Donovan Mitchell. Melo just regressed big time. He was awful in this playoff series. Paul George was getting locked up by Joe Ingles. <laughs> he was getting jingled. <laughs> yeah. And outside of that, they really still had no depth. So the 2018 offseason, big question mark for the Thunder was, could they re-sign Paul George? Of course, for years, even dating back to when he was on the Pacers, there had been rumors, you know, he's from Southern California, played at Fresno State, Lakers had money, they could pursue multiple max players. I mean, it was an open secret they were getting LeBron, but Paul George said, no, nah, LA. I'm going to stay in Oklahoma. Four years, $137 million contract. Of course, he and Russ had that big party to celebrate. I think put out pictures on Instagram of them like smoking cigars yeah. at the party and whatnot. So you know what? They got Here the big go. fish out the way, but they also re-signed Jeremy Grant and they re-signed fat-ass Raymond Felton. So, yeah. you know, pretty successful offseason for them. Yeah, they would also send out Carmelo Anthony to the Hawks in a three-team deal and get back Dennis Schroeder. Obviously a downgrade in terms of talent, but it had to be done. At this stage, Jamelo's career, his ego was still like, oh, I'm still a superstar level player when he really was. And, and Schroeder, very annoying in the playoffs. We'll talk about that. But he was a solid player for them off the bench. So they had a great off season, right? They basically did everything they needed to do. And then they started the next season 0-4. <laughs> I love that. I, I'd love it too. <laughs> to be fair to them, Russ missed the first two games. He was recovering from knee surgery. No, let's not be fair to them. They started 0-4 and they were terrible. Okay, well, <laughs> you can be fair to them and say they completely turned things around because they won 10 of their next 11 games. And this was the season where the Thunder were not really led by Russ, they were led by Paul George because he had a legit MVP type season. 28-7-4. In December, he had a crazy game against the Nets where he scored 25 in the fourth quarter alone. He had that game against the Jazz in February, a little revenge game where he hit that floater to the moon. Didn't he have like 47 in that game yeah, too? Yeah, was just putting up crazy stats. They swept the Blazers in the regular season, but throughout that all, again, only improved their record by one win. It's a tough Western Conference out there. It always is. And you just mentioned they swept the Blazers in the regular season, which means they had to be confident as all hell going into the playoffs, playing the Blazers who got the third seed for a second straight year. And we mentioned it again in the day retrospective, but going into this series, the consensus was firmly with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Everyone on TV, everyone on Twitter. I remember ESPN's like expert predictions. Only one expert picked the Blazers to win. Only one out of like 20. I mean, I thought 
thought the Thunder were going to win, but okay. of course you do, because you're a fake fan. <laughs> yeah. But we were going to be at the games regardless. Game one of the series, Blazers started out red hot. OKC were able to chip away a little bit, but clutch buckets from Dame and then Ennis Cantor of all players secured the win for the Blazers. Game two, Thunder actually had a good start for this one. They had a nine point lead at one point in the second quarter. This is the game where Dame and Russ were going at it on the sidelines, but CJ hit a three at the buzzer at halftime to tie the game. And then the third and fourth quarter, Dame and Seth Curry just started torching the Thunder. Hell, even Myers Leonard got in on it a little bit in the fourth quarter. Yeah, everyone was getting buckets at that point, and we were hyped. 2 0 lead against the Thunder, a series basically everyone thought we were going to lose. Going into OKC, a must win for the Thunder. And Russ, he did respond. He had 33 and 11. He was rocking the baby on Dame, pointing at him after he hit that three. Yeah, hit that big three late where he was screaming at him. Paul George, on the other hand, wasn't great. He put up 22 on awful shooting. And what he did at the end of this game pissed us off. He got the ball thrown up to him and did that like double pump reverse dunk as time expired. Why did he do it? Because he's an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I'm sure he's not, actually. I've seen some episodes of Paul George's podcast. He seems like a lovely fellow, but he was an asshole on this day. Yeah, and that pissed us off, and it must have pissed off the Blazers because they came out hungry in Game 4. Built up a 19-point lead in the third. Thunder made it, like, a little bit interesting in the fourth, but CJ would ice the game. He'd block Paul George on one end, and then would hit a pull-up three on the other end. And the Thunder, once again, were down 3-1 in the first round to a division rival. To a team they were heavily favored to beat. Yeah, once again, heavily favored. Once again, they're choking. Game five, of course, one of the best playoff games in recent memory, especially for us. Credit to the Thunder. They came out playing like their season was on the line. Paul George, for the first time, all playoffs actually looked like the MVP candidate he was all season. It was seven and a half minutes left in this game. The Thunder had a 15-point lead. And then like a house of cards, they fell apart. Yeah, just completely fell apart. Nurk showed up for us. We were getting hyped. The Blazers just slowly chipped away, cut the lead all the way down to two. CJ would respond, tie the game with 113 with a minute left. Then PG and Dame would trade buckets to tie it at 115. And what I don't get is why did Russ get the final shot for them? PG was cooking all game. He was cooking late. And Russ decided, let me take just a heavily ass contested shot against Amin. You've been watching this guy play for what, like 15 years? Yeah. And you're still asking why he's taking dumb ass shots in the clutch? Yeah, I mean, I knew why, but Paul George has got to command that ball. And of the other end we all know what happens dame took a step back 37 foot bomb in pg's eye the bad shot he took to end this super team and hit the reset button for the thunder completely you know, the All-Star game was really terrible this year, but the best part about it was when Dame hit basically the same shot on Paul George again. <laughs> Love it. And you have to wonder if Paul George had just like a brief little moment of PTSD from that. Oh, you know he did. Amazing moment for us. We were just ecstatic. I don't even know how to put it in words, but if you look back at this for the Thunder fan's perspective... Best thing that could have possibly happened for them. Best thing that could have happened to them. They flipped PG for that massive haul that included Shea. They sent out Russ to the Rockets and got back draft picks. And nowadays, they're battling for the first seed and their future is set. And the Blazers are stuck rebuilding, getting embarrassed against the Hornets. And they still have a war chest of first round <laughs> picks to use. Yeah. So it's only been five years since the end of this team when Dame ended them. And they're kind of already forgotten about. Imagine like 20 years down the line. People are going to barely remember Paul George or really even Melo played for the Thunder. Yeah, Russ is always is going to be remembered by the OKC faithful, but the Russ Paul George duo, depending on what the Clippers do, they could be more remembered as Clippers than as members of the Thunder. Yeah, for sure. And Melo, he played one season for the Thunder. No one's going to remember it, especially because he wasn't very good. So yeah, that's going to be like a trivia question yeah. <laughs> 20 years down the line. Like who did Melo play for after the Knicks? So what do you guys think? Is this one of the biggest failed super teams of the modern NBA? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like. And hey, while you're here, check out some of our other content as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.